What's up, everybody? Just wanted to make a quick video here talking about Imperial Onslaught and farming it when Dragalia lost. Part of it is being able to do it on auto. You'll hear people talk about auto IO. It's a very important part of, of getting stronger in this game. You know, the, the tablets and emblems that drop in Imperial Onslaught are, are needed for building endgame weapons. They're needed for Dragon Prince, and they're needed for Weapon Dojos. So those are all extremely important as you start to really power up your team and get there. And it's a big farm. I mean, you have to do hundreds and hundreds of these, really, um, to, to cap out. So someone discovered that you can actually do these on auto. So uh, I think it's important, whether you're at in the game, as you go through Imperial Onslaught, I guess the first step is just being able to solo it. So you want to be able to just solo this content that's with you playing, but your own team, using your dragon, using your helper abilities. That, that's a big step. If you can solo Imperial Onslaught, good for you. You're pretty far in this game. you got some strong character. Uh, the next step is really being able to do it, uh, I say like semi-auto, some people call, which is basically you might use your helper abilities, um, maybe turn your dragon on. But that's about it. You're basically hands-off, but you're still looking at it a little bit that's not auto because you're touching it um, the next step is auto where you press start and you come back five minutes later and see see how it went um, so i guess as the auto development goes at first you want to just be able to have your team ever be able to do auto so building a team that can do it maybe one out of five is, is a step um, then you obviously try to get your percentages up to where you can do it uh, nearly 100% of the time. So you want to get to the point where you can just auto IO and come back and you know you got your three or four emblems. Um, it's very important. And this, we're talking about mastery level, obviously. So there's a few key things and I'm going to go through each of these. My teams are not perfect for this. Um, I'm a high dragon healer. You can see my, my stats up there. Uh, I basically just heal. So my healers are very strong. Uh, you might have stronger other characters and it's perfectly fine to just focus on one IO at a time, especially the one you need. Uh, building characters for all these and teams for all these is a large investment. So this takes some time. This is really getting to the end game. Uh, before we talk about it, there's a few things that you have to do. Uh, you can see the resistance chart uh, over there. So the way this works is, is you need two DPS that resist the Imperial Onslaught. This is key. Uh, one of them should be melee. Your lead should be melee. And they should be around 40 mana circles. So that's... You want to have about, I guess the four strikes not necessary, so 39 mana circles. So you want to be at 39 mana circles for your primary and secondary. More is obviously better. And then you need two healers, preferably one of the element, uh, Lowen, Cleo, that. And the other one you need is, is probably a hard requirement here. So I use Vixel in the past uh, as, as a healer, but Verica and Hildegard are extremely useful, as well as Valentine's Hildegard. So you probably need a Hildegard or a Vixel. If you don't have either of those, um, it's going to be a little suboptimal, and you're going to have to tweak this a bit. So I've done this for months now, so my teams have evolved and changed, um, but there's nothing too you know, crazy about, about any of this. So I'm just going to jump right in, and uh, we'll do these one at a time. Now, I should note that the water IO is the only one you can't guarantee 100% on, no matter how good your team is. There's some weird logs blocking the path, and sometimes you can have a 20,000 might wind team with freeze resistance, and they get stuck on a log, and the boss doesn't even summon. For five minutes, your characters are just standing there. So you can't be 100% on water, but you should be pretty darn close on the others. And again, if you're just getting there, 50%, that's a, you're getting there. So we'll do master, um, and we'll talk a little quick about the teams, rather. Again, helper ability doesn't matter because you're not using it. Uh, history. Make sure you use that history button. So two characters with freeze resist. Water IO does freeze resist. So Adi, you can see on the chart here uh, on the on the side, uh, it's Adi, Aileen, and Hawk. So you need two of those three to do this well. So I like a melee lead. Uh, I like Adi. His bleed is insane damage. So Adi and Aileen are there. My dragons aren't great, so I have two rocks. Um, Lowen is important because you want that on element healer. He's using high mid guard um, and a 4.2 staff, so it's pretty shitty. And I'm using Hildegard, which is using her Halloween staff. You could also just use another 4.2, 5.2 where necessary. And my might is 
14A. So this isn't even, this isn't a great team. But, uh, oh, I forgot something key. The worm prints, if you notice on my healers, were how to flee properly. It's a four star worm print. And when you're about to die, it increases your defense. So I found that my healers dying were what caused me to wipe on a lot of these IOs. So I like that how to flee properly. So if you have, there's also the New Year's type of worm print that uh, gives you last defense when you die uh, or take a certain amount of damage, it gives you automatic regen. Typically you, you may wipe from your healer just getting uh, pinged out really. Uh, so if your healer dies, probably wipe, uh, unless it's much later. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. That's why I use how to, uh, how to flee properly on my healers. So, yep, we're not doing anything. We're not trying to do any, any skills here. Uh, it looks like, you know, some of our characters are already getting frozen because um, the only freeze resists here are two main DPS one. Um, stuck on a log. This is, this is, if I had to gauge this particular run, this is on the bad side. So, uh, you still want to be close to, I mean, look how he's stuck on the log there. 80% on water, I think you can do. Uh, I think about one out of five, you'll get screwed on the log. And it could very well be this, this run here. Um, don't want to be trapped in the corner, but you have no say here, remember. If you want to be auto, you're not interfering. This should be auto, you put the phone in your pocket or wherever, and you open it up and, okay, I got it, go auto. Um, so, uh, it's all just part of it. So it's also very cool and relaxing, I think, to watch your team do these. I, I enjoy them. Um, obviously, after you do hundreds of these, I'm not watching them, and the goal is to not watch them, but it's actually kind of fun sometimes to watch. And if you are engaged, you can kind of save that one wipe with using your dragon breaking log or something. So you can kind of not auto, but again, for the purpose of this, we're, we're auto. So our DPS is, is much lower this time. I can sometimes kill this with two minutes left. So he's at nearly full health with two minutes left. So this is a bad run going now. Um, you really want to break before two minutes. Uh, my Hildegard just about died. Uh, but uh, again, that proc from the how to flee properly gave her extra defense. Um, now, we're, now we're ramping up the damage on him, which is good. Uh, you really want to break him by a minute 30. Uh, so we're, we're behind, but mm, team's pretty strong. So hopefully Adi can get uh, another bleed off on him. Nope, missed the bleed. So again, I'm not controlling any of this. So you know, this log is kind of uh, screwing us where it is. Got uh, my healers are not charging; they're just attacking a log. So there's a chance Adi might just die here because my healers aren't helping anymore. So hopefully not. Break them. Just an example of why this one is really is the hardest. Still a minute left. This is going to be close. He's bleeding random enemies. He's getting stuck on logs. So this is a good way to show you about as bad as it can get. So 45 seconds to do this last 20%. Let's see if Adi and Aileen can, can put on the heat. Again, my healers are doing nothing. This is just terrible. So if, if Adi stays on them, I think we can do it. But they can sometimes change targets. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get it. So that's a tough one. You, know, you, you can't be upset. You have to look at what works for your different characters. Again, what works for me in a lot of these is the how to flee properly uh, worm print for my healers. Because in certain IOs, maybe your main character takes a lot of damage. But in this one, my, both my healers are not freeze resist. They might just die. So how to flee properly was really key uh, for that one. So we fully autoed it. We got, um, you kind of want to use the experience worm print, but I don't mess with it on this particular one. So I, I, on some of these that I'm very confident in, I use the uh, experience worm print. Um, so that was water. So we're just going to go through this and look at every team. So fire. So you got to look at the chart that I have put up with the resistances. So for fire, you want Xander, uh, Karina, Christmas Cleo, 
Uh, Verica is good actually because she has the right resist. So again, it doesn't matter what helper you choose. So um, my team for this is pretty swole. So I have two Leviathans on Cleo and Xander and they're 80. I have Verica and Hilda, even though they're not. Um, I have Thaniel buffed, but I feel very, the, he's just not very good. So it's perfectly fine to use any healer that doesn't, isn't double damage. Like I wouldn't want to use a wind healer here, or excuse me, uh, yeah, a wind healer here because the fire would hurt it. So this, this IO should go down in like uh, really quick. Because this is probably my strongest auto team. So if you notice, I don't have to use the how to flee properly. I have experienced worm prints on Hilda. I have, uh, you could use the energized print is good. Uh, that's also a very strong one. And you don't need Xander and Cleo to do this, but you do need 39 mana circle on a melee main character that's resistant. So it looks like Cleo, I mean, excuse me, uh, you could also use Xander from Dragon Yule, Karina, Axe user. And it looks like there's another sword user. I'm not recognizing him. I don't think that's Celery, but one of the characters I'm not too familiar with is another option. So if this one is not too bad. Um, again, it's hard to tell what's really because of your, how strong your team is. You know, 14K might versus 18K might makes a huge difference. But again, you gotta just work through it. Being able to solo it with you controlling it is, is very nice, good job. Being able to do these and just maybe sometimes use a Verica helper. So I know people who play it like that, they have a heal on their helper and that's the only button they press. And that's pretty close to auto, but it's not, you know, it's not auto. So we're, we're not doing that. So look, on this one, we got two minutes, 45 seconds left. He's already at half. He's about to get broke. Uh, this is an example of a team that just beats the hell out of an IO. So if my other teams were better, they would, they could all go this fast. So the, on this run, and again, this is all RNG, and I'm doing these all in a row, so you just see I'm not st stopping the stream or anything. Um, and it can get squirrely at the end. Uh, a lot of guys can spawn if your main character gets distracted and is not on the boss. Your healers can get smashed. Uh, so this is quick. If you can do it with two in half time, with two minutes left, that's that's as good as it gets, really. I don't think you can count on many many teams doing it much faster than, than this one here. Oh, but Cleo got distracted, so it, this last sliver could take 45 seconds. Luckily, Xander kind of stays on the boss pretty good. He's like a rabbit animal there. Okay, so that was fire. Again, my water team is super strong. We have water facilities and stuff. Um, I have two Leviathans. I'm not even using my Max on Bound Poseidon that I have on my Thaniel. So that just shows you it's not it's not always intuitive. I have a Thaniel that's got Max on Bound Poseidon and he's water and this is fire and I'm not using him. It's just because Verica and Hilda do better. And the other Hilda or Vixel probably does better. So I would use Verica and Vixel, Verica and Valentine's Hilda, Verica and other Hilda perfectly fine uh, so let's try the next one so we're just gonna go through all these wind um, a lot of people have to farm this to get ready for high midgard uh, if not then you, you probably need to farm a bunch of these again helper doesn't matter go to history press the history button uh, so again you look at the chart when you're building the team and say who resists this or right, Carl Navid Ezalith Cerise don't have any of those um, uh, well, I do have Carl, and I have Carl and Sinua. So I didn't, these, Carl was not powered up at all. So I completely built Carl just for this, um, which is fine. He's a, he's a fine character. He's resistant. Vixel is really good for this because he's um, resistant to the sleep. But I, I like just using Hilda. This team is solid. If you see me using the experienced worm print like I'm using on my Verica there, you know I'm pretty confident in this. So this should be another one that goes pretty fine. Uh, not too worried about this one. The only one that gets really annoying is that water one. Um, and you can see we almost wiped, we did it with like 10 seconds left. Um, and it happened. And sometimes 
you get hung up on a log even more. But um, I also use the Energize Worm Print on my Hilda here. You can see she's got five stacks already. Uh, just to get that initial, her initial um, heel is just gonna be thick. And but that gives me time for the Verica heel to come around. And once Verica and Hilda start rolling their heels, uh, there's not a lot in this that's gonna kill Carl or Sinua. So Carl's good, his, his S1 comes super fast. You see how fast, if I ever do a full combo, it's almost, it's more than halfway full. So Carl is only used for this for me, but again, this takes significant investment. You gotta build, you gotta spend a lot. When I started autoing these, I went, I basically spent all my mana, uh, all my orbs, had to farm a bunch of extra stuff to get, to power up these. Like Aileen, I had nothing. Um, Carl, not much, my Sinnoh was pretty weak. Um, the Xander and Cleo Dragon Yule, they were, I like both of them, so they were already pretty strong. Um, but it, it takes it takes investment. So this is really, really end game. I think this is the end game solo content, is being able to auto these. The dragons are the end game content, the high dragons, and they're awesome. Can't wait on the third one. Um, I'm almost max unbound HMS. I've only done High Brunhilda maybe 30, 40 times, so i got a ways to go with her. So, checking the clock, not as fast as the water one, which the guy was almost dead at, at two minutes, but much faster in wind, and he's not broke yet. Again, you want to break him with like a minute left. Um, strength up. Getting some buffs rolling now. Three strength buffs, so Carl's putting out some heat. Now he's got a crit buff. Let's see if I can land a special move on him. Should be some damage. Yeah, he got him broke. Okay. We got some nice rolls there. And Carl's really good for this uh, because that a his AOE S1 in this little bridge here, which is where you spend a lot of the fight. So a minute 30, that's average. That's kind of where you want to you want to get to. And again, as you're getting better at this, you got to decide is your investment worth time. I think it is. I think you want to get to 100% clear rate, and then you want to get to faster clears. And there's been a you know maybe the void weapons help this, maybe something else. So we'll do the light. Again, it doesn't matter which helper you pick. Need some uh, stamina here though. Oh, so I, <laughs> I started with my, uh, just like my high dragon character team. So I'm just gonna give up real quick, my bad. Now this one, light, uh, I farmed this one the most because I wanted to max my staff dojos. So I grinded 1,800 emblems in a 10 day period to get my staffs from 18 to 30. So I have 30, 30 staff dojo, uh, which was from light IO. So we might as well show it real quick. My castle's in a, a state of flux because I'm uh, moving everything around right now. But um, where did I put my staff dojos? Oh yeah, down here. So staff dojo 30, 30, serious grind, um, which was light IO. It was all light, 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 light. So I really wanted a strong team that, that could smash this. So, um, again, you want to build a light IO team. What do you do? Well, you look at who resists it in that chart I have. It's Kleeman and Zerker. So I actually didn't have Zerker when I started that mega grind. I had Kleeman. So I used Kleeman and Sazanka. And I went back and forth between who I should main with because Sazanka is stronger in melee and that's the key. But she got blinded a lot. And when she was blinded, she wasn't doing her skills. And it was just, she wasn't doing shit. So I actually mained Kleeman. So you can do that. So that's perfectly fine, whatever works for you. So this one, I wanted mega consistency. So I have both um, how to flee properly on them and not the experience. Uh, I think it's just because I haven't done it since I got the grind. So I'm actually gonna put uh, the experience worm print on Verica here. I think I'm confident enough that it's not even fully maxed 
Um, but again, a melee that's resistant, secondary that's also resistant, and then two healers. Uh, I used Cleo, but I, I don't even you know use her anymore. So, Kleeman and Zerker should just take care of this there. But again, I used Botan, I used Sazanka. I didn't always have these. I've been doing this for a couple months now. So this is just where I'm at. And these are not optimal by any stretch. There's people with much better teams than this, but. So uh, this one inflicts blind, which is a really devastating one for your DPS. Um, it's bad enough that you're, the worst part about blind is you're not building your skills. So you're just miss, 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 miss. Not only is you're not doing any damage, but you're not building your skills. So highly recommend having Kleeman and Zerker on this versus even a pimped out Ayasu. But if you have one, that's fine. But I probably wouldn't use them. So I, I favor those resistances. Blind is just too strong. My Sazanka is really strong. Um, but I was much more consistent once I got Kleeman. So I pulled Kleeman, had to invest in him up to 40 mana circles or 39. Uh, wasn't planning on it. This is the only thing I use him for. Or excuse me, I got Zerker. That was the second one I got. So I had to invest in him. But once I switched Sazanka with Zerker, clear rate went to 100%. So... And if I can break him here before he runs up top, he's going to die pretty fast. So he's taking a beating here. It didn't get a special move off on him when I broke, but just our autos are pretty good. Kleeman plays very much like Carl with the fast charging S1 that um, is the nice AoE. Um, like right now, it's going to be pretty nice to clear out all these guys from beating up on Verica. So this one gets a little tough at, tough at the end. So that's why I used Hide a Fleet properly in Verica. Remember, you, I just changed it to the experience one. Um, so it may be, that might've been dumb, but I, th I think I still have this. Um, okay, so Zerker broke off the, from the boss, which is usually bad. I think in this situation it was fine because Verica was getting beat up pretty bad. Um, and remember, if you're playing this solo, it's the same thing still apply, not auto, but just solo. Uh, bring your two resistant characters. I think bring two healers, trust me. But then just use your helper, use your dragon, and it'll be even easier. So we got, uh, so we've gone through most of these. We just got uh, Shadow next, which is also, also can be tough. Um, not as tough as water, but uh, and again, it depends on your team. You saw what I did to the fire IO. I just melted it. Um, no pun intended, with Cleo and Xander, and two off healers. Okay, so let's do the last one, and that's gonna, I mean, this, the purpose of this video, I just wanted to show you what's up, talk a little bit about it, uh, give you guys some encouragement, because, uh, you know, doing it even, you know, getting to fully auto like I'm doing here is where you wanna be, but just being able to solo it is, is good, you know, you're strong. This game is a marathon, so take your time on it. Okay, so here's my light team. Uh, pretty thick. Uh, only 15.3k might, but pretty solid. Um, the Julieta and the Anna Lee are resistant here. She's not on this old graphic I just pulled up. My dragons aren't great. I'm using rock, I mean, a uh, Linworm, zero unbound. Um, Harold's Hanamoto, kind of on my main characters usually. Uh, I'm using the how to flee properly on the healers because the, the spikes can just wreck them. So we'll see how it goes. And I haven't done this one much lately, so can certainly tweak this one. I farmed basically the all the light tablets, I needed a couple thousand of them. So I did that a few hundred times. 
Um, then I farmed the high dragon ones to so fire uh, and wind. Um, now I'm starting to farm for high mercury, so I did all the water ones. So this is really the ones I've, I've done the least. Is right here. But I'm um, just based on my experience, I think my team should be uh, more than strong enough to handle it. And I would say for this one, the risk is your healers. Uh, it's your healers going down. I don't think uh, Juliet or Annalie is going to die too easy. I speak of the devil. It looks like she's going down right now. And obviously, if you could four strike those shields away, how easy would that be? Um, so you really want to get your guys on the boss. And again, you can't control this because you're autoing. But if you can get both your melee latched onto the boss and their AOE skill is just clearing everything else up and your healers are getting charging, uh, it's a good, good spot to be in. So my healers uh, need some more charge. Annalie got a nice bomb off right there. Should help things out. Need to get some more heals off of my healers. Or I'm, I'm getting a little nervous about this run. Um, I don't like how we keep crossing the spikes. Um, I don't like how my healers weren't charging there for a little bit because of the force, uh, lack of force strikes. Uh, looks like Hildegard's taking a beating. So um, hopefully she lives. And I feel like uh, if Hildegard lives, we're in a great spot. She's pretty low. She's red now. Vixel is red. So we need some heals to go off here. There's the first one, we need another one. Broke them. So uh, at this point, if a healer dies, our, our two main characters may still be strong enough. She healed us holding on for her life. There you go, she got a big heal off. I think it was her staff heal or Vixels. There we go. So that's how I auto all five IOs. Again, 100% um, on just about all of them except water um, because the logs can just screw you. Uh, this one, uh, I haven't done it enough, but uh, probably 90 something percent and I could probably tweak it. Once I start doing this for farming, I'll certainly tweak it. So thanks guys for watching, that's gonna be it. Uh, if you have any questions, ping me on Discord, on Puff Trees, on the Dragalia Discord, message me, whatever, in game, all that stuff. Yeah, you wanna uh, you wanna auto these IOs, or you're gonna go crazy. <laughs> so peace out, guys.